You're a board member of DIL, Development of Literacy, mm -hmm. um, mainly focused on girls in Pakistan. So what do you think is a connection between literacy and empowering women, as well as stopping gender inequality? Um, that's a very long question. <laughs> it's a related answer, and I'll try to cover all of them. Mm -hmm. um, basically, our focus is, and we truly believe everybody who's on the billboard and developing the literacy, that especially in third world countries, in Pakistan, where terrorism has become like a huge issue uh, in internationally, um, it's all related. So if we, what our belief is that if we can actually get the women in the household to be educated, it will follow through and hit the family in one way or the other. So even if it's not necessary the women have to go out and work, but they should have the background, they should have the education, because then they will try and make sure their kids get some sort of education and they'll try and get them influenced in one way or the other. And that's where all of it, it's a change, chain reaction. So the issues we are having right now is, as you said, um, all these issues that you mentioned in the question are related to people not having education. Once they're educated, they feel that they are stronger, they feel more confident, they feel that they can actually stand up for their rights, and then they have something to base it on. Right now, they are most of the people are living in a vacuum anywhere. You go to Africa, Pakistan, India, there's so many, even in the US, there are a lot of places where there is not that much emphasis on it. I mean, I know overall it's something that you have to do, but in some cases, unfortunately, people just don't have the resources or the opportunities or the parents think it's not important. Mm -hmm. But what we truly believe is, and I personally believe, if you can actually get one female in a household educated, it will actually filter down, maybe not a year or two years, but in three, four years, it will filter down. Um, they will make sure that the kids are clean, they, because they've now got the information that, hey, this thing should not be done this way, this is right, this is wrong. They will try and force their families to put their kids to college, to school. They don't have to work. But education is not just work, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, if you look, some of our students are doing amazing work. Last year, we took two American teachers to Pakistan with us. And they were amazed because these kids would work during the day because they were supporting their families. And some of the girls were not working. But because they were going to school, they were unconsciously working. Because in the night, their dad would be like, oh, you know, I did this business on the little, you know, cart they had during the day selling things. And she would be doing all the math for the parents. Or even grocery buying, she would be doing the math. And that's education because they are now, without thinking, using what they're learning in school at home. Most of these girls were keeping the house clean even though they, there is mud homes, because they've now learned hygiene is so important. They were trying to use the math and they were teaching their kids, you know, how to count. Without thinking, you know, their little siblings, they were teaching them, oh, they, we have these toys, we sit with them and play, but if you've watched them, they're unconsciously using, like, oh, look, there are four of these, if you have these, three of these, you know, we don't have many things, but we have three beds, and if we just had four more, then maybe five of us. They're using that knowledge all the time. And when the kids are busy and they learn, especially boys, and they think that because they're learning, they have some options in life, they don't go off the path that easy. When the kids are doing nothing, they, have, they feel that they have no, uh, no way of getting out of the situation they're in, or you know, they just feel helpless, they will get into things that we don't want them to get. So when people say, oh, you know, terrorism and uh, gender um, issues, yeah, it, it won't exist if people were actually feeling that they can actually achieve something. Right now, the issue we are noticing is, is mostly because they feel helpless and they feel there is no end to where you guys are lucky, we are lucky, you have great education, you can pick and choose your topics and, and that's that's a good thing, we are lucky, but we, also, we should also try and go to these places. I, I know you haven't been, I, I don't know how many times you I've go back, awesome. but even in the US, you know, if you go like on Thanksgiving and go to these homes and sometimes take the kids to, um, you know, do meal handouts, you will realize 
how difficult it is just for a family living maybe a mile from you because they just did not have those resources and that those families that's where the kids go off track so education is extremely important because then they have something that they can do with it it's knowledge right mm -hmm. some other things that you're involved in are women leadership open so why do you believe that's important i mean there's a normal open and that's for everyone the um, normal open <laughs> So women open, we realized when, when open was, um, so entrepreneurs, leadership, all of these things, if you look, just forget, not only open, but a lot of conferences happen, right? There are a lot of focus on IT and businesses and entrepreneurs, and there's a mix of females and males. In, all, in doing open, we realized there's a huge niche of females mm -hmm. who either had done college, and were working but then had kids and went to being housewives mm -hmm. or um, have been working and now they are CEOs of companies or VPs and now they are thinking this is not really what we wanted to do you know and there are different segments and I, I believe males do go through the same process but females go through it way more because of the changes in their lives they mostly stay home moms when the kids come along and then the kids go to school and they're like now we want to get back in the workforce, they have no idea how to do that. That's when we realized women's open uh, for women was very important. What we are focusing on, most of our audiences are coming, they, are, they I would say 40-50% are from people who are already working, are in one field or the other, and the other half are people either just starting, they've just graduated and kind of thinking out what to do, but mostly are women who've gone back home and now they're thinking of coming back in the workforce or are at home and now thinking we want to start our own business and they don't know how to go about it. So we do this whole uh, women's forum because they get to see speakers who've actually done exactly the same thing they did or they were in the same. So when they're sitting in the audience, they're thinking, oh, we have to go to the laundry and I really want to start this business and how do I do this and I have to kids up and you know they're thinking that and then they see the CEO who's running a very successful business sitting on stage and saying you know I had an issue my kids were growing up I had to juggle work and this and I had to do then they feel motivated that wow you know they did it we can do it and then they get the opportunity to ask them questions they can mingle them with them during lunch and then they meet like we all are sitting right let's say we all are attending and then I'll say, yeah, wow, I didn't know she did this or she had kids. And you'll say, you know, so I thought of the same thing. So it's networking. Mm -hmm. And once you network, you can, you can actually create um, your own business really fast and your own confidence really fast. And that's what the Women's Open Forum is. And it's, hopefully it's been helping people and we think it is. Mm -hmm. so. so what kind of feedback have you gotten? Have you gotten anyone who said that this is really like impacted them in a way? Yeah, in the last three years we've got uh, incredible feedback. And every year we get feedback on what they want to see more. So for next year, you know, we're already thinking, okay, we should be adding this. We should Basically, mostly what they are thankful for are uh, quite a few things. One is the advice they get when they're there the networking, so the network and friends they make while they're there because they can call them and say, hey, you were also looking for work, how did it happen? Or you started your company, who did you use to, as a lawyer or, you know, so you have now a network you can rely on. Second, I think the most important thing that they've kind of picked up on from Open is connections. So there, if we hear somebody who was working for 10 years then went away for five years and now want to come back and work for us, we say, Hey, get your resume together. We have like, you know, mm -hmm. charter members, there are people here, maybe they're looking for work. Why don't you talk to them? So the connections are there. And that's our job. Like when I met you, I'm thinking, okay, what do you guys need? How can I connect you with people? And that's the beauty of forums like this. And that's the feedback we've gotten from that. Mm -hmm. So in all the places that you've lived and visited, what have you noticed culturally in how women are treated and how they act? How women are treated and mm how -hmm. they act. So I've traveled a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I was a child, we used to every every year for two months. We used to be in Europe. We used to go to Egypt. Yeah. So I've been traveling a lot, um, 
And I think in a way it really depends on your situation and where you are at what time. Mm -hmm. So we've been really fortunate. I think, uh, and I've studied in England, um, nothing against it, it was a, it's a lovely country, but you see a difference, um, um, especially in the field I am in, people think, it used to be 15 years ago, it was not a female oriented field. Mm -hmm. Construction was not thought that way. People think, you know, you're a female, I don't know why they think we're always younger than we should be and we just don't have that experience and that mindset is changing. It has changed a lot in the last five, six years. It's changing dramatically. Um, I think culturally US is way more open and um, balanced in this way for females and work ethics. And even culturally roaming about, you won't, you know, you, you would go visit a city and have no issue. And I think it has to do with the strip malls and uh, McDonald's and, <laughs> you know, you feel like you're in the same place regardless where you are. But if you go to different countries, everybody has a very different lifestyle. Um, in Europe, um, in England, I believe there was a little bit more reservation and a lot more... Um, I believe a little bit more of a snobbish attitude towards females, especially from the Asian descendant. Um, Europe overall was okay. Um, Middle East, I found a little not my cup of tea. Some places are very, uh, um, they have different ideas of how females should be living. Um, they treat religion as a dangling a bone that this is our because it's said in religion in Islam there has been no mention that the females should be just sitting at home and doing nothing our prophet's wife was the biggest businesswoman of her time right and so looking at different countries it's not the countries it's, it's more the culture that those countries are trying to promote that has kind of made the role of women, I think, a little bit tougher than it needs to be. Muslim women have women have been really strong throughout history. Now, if you have a man marrying somebody who's ten years older, they'd be like, "Oh my God!" You know, the older woman must have done something, and you know, they must have gotten in or whatever. But if you look at history, our prophet's wife was quite older than him. She was a businesswoman and she proposed to him. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody thinks of that. Yeah. And they treat like in Islam, women are in veil and you're just hiding and you're doing nothing. That's not the case. So I think it, it, there are different things. It is changing. And that's why if you see these acts of terrors, it's more that people resist change. People are not comfortable with change. It's like you take a neighbor and they have the neighbor's house under construction, they don't like it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not mm -hmm. in my backyard. Yeah. And any change triggers a reaction. And so women's role in the world is changing. It has changed a lot. Some countries are way ahead. Some countries are way behind. But you know, I would highly recommend if you guys look at the history and you've read it. Mm -hmm. 60 years ago, where was US? Very similar sad. to where the third world countries are yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Women were wearing long gloves, they would not mm -hmm. show their hair, they would not be working in the, in the fields, they were all women proper. Things changed because the country was a little more advanced. In third world countries we are still in that and that's what people don't realize. So you talked about how the US do you think is going to be evolving over the next couple of years since there's already been so much change in the way women are treated. So what do you think is going to be the role of women in you know, your field in 20 years or so? Our field has changed quite dramatically now. There are more female students in architecture schools than there used to be. Um, and I think the field is becoming where it's a huge competition for men. Um, <laughs> females can understand um, people. They can understand how household works. So when we are talking to a client who is doing a house, Men half of the time don't understand things that the females do, how to run a house, how the families work, and we have an edge over that. Mm -hmm. So in our field, and my business partner who's a male might disagree, 
<laughs> but in our field, I think female has an edge because they are more sensitive to certain issues. They're more sensitive to spaces, and it's a natural thing. Females would keep the house clean, men won't. It's a natural thing that you would decorate the house, men are just not good at it. Or they can understand what would work for their kids or their husband or their family. Men just are not built that way. So I think in our field, we are going to surpass males. <laughs> People might disagree, but that's what my thinking is. I think we will surpass males way faster than anybody in this field. And if you look at it, some of the big architects right now are females and they're getting more and more every year, so it's pretty exciting. That's great. Yeah. And that's debunking the myth that the architectural world is mostly Yeah, because it used to be master builder, right? That's the word. Mm -hmm. And it used to be just building. Mm -hmm. But that's not it. A house, anybody can build. Or a building, anybody can build. But is it comfortable? Does it work for the people who are actually using it? And that's just natural in us. And if somebody has the knack of actually designing spaces nicely, then that natural thing becomes part of an expertise, then you can't really compete with it. <laughs> Whereas men have to create the expertise. And there are some very amazing architects for males out there, but I'm just saying in general, we have an edge because it just comes easy to us. Mm -hmm. Not to everybody, but it, for most of the females, I think it's very, it just comes naturally. So. How did you get to where you are today? As in, how did you work your way to the position you are now, getting interviewed by so many different, like, known names and um, having a business that's gotten awards and things of that sort? Yes, it's an interesting question. And I think the main reason, honestly, is encouragement from your parents. And that's where education comes in. <laughs> because even back when I said to my parents I wanted to go to an art school and do architecture, a lot of my family members came to my parents and said, have you guys lost your mind? How can you send your daughter to an art school and how can you send her away from home? And because my parents were educated, they themselves had higher uh, you know, uh, degrees, they had done masters, they thought for themselves, they said, no, if our kids want to explore, whatever venue they want to in education, they should have the right to explore it. And I think that's very important. So we got encouragement from home. That was number one. Um, never letting down um, the confidence that had been given to you. So for example, if my parents trusted me to do something, I made sure I never let them down. So that's important. You let, you kind of let go of that, um, you know, confidence once, then nobody would trust you again. So that's important, I think it goes hand in hand. So I got the trust from home, I got the encouragement from home, but then I kind of took care of it and didn't exploit it. Um, then I think having, being lucky to have good guidance through school and college, that was important. And then I think finding out what I really wanted to do. I was really good at arts, but I wanted to be an architect like since seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So it just helped because I knew my focus Whereas a lot of people in my in my class, they did architecture school and they decided this is not for them. Which was sad. It's a five-year mm -hmm. degree you've done, which is as crazy as a medical degree, and then you decide you don't like to do it. So I was lucky that I loved what I did. And then my husband's support. It's important. I wouldn't be, yes, I would have been a great architect, but I wouldn't be running this business if I didn't have his support. So it's really important. So I don't think I'm not one of those people who say that women can do everything. Yes, we can. But if you don't have the support and the background, you really don't want to do it. Like if I didn't have his support, I wouldn't be able to do this because I would be then supporting my family and my home more. But because as partners we can support each other, I was able to do what I can do today. So I think that is a very important thing. So if you get good support from your family, you can kind of excel in it. And then um, I think just being truthful to yourself and being happy with what you do, you can really excel in whatever field you're in. And what is the, what is the description of being famous or excelling? Everybody's description is different, right? For you girls, you're young, you're probably thinking being in Hollywood or being a big name is exciting. Or um, for me, when I was young, I was like, 
to design this 200 story building you know for me that's important it changes for me it's important because everything I do it could be like brand new homes to a kitchen remodel but once I do it and I see the clients and I see them happy that's it that cannot change how excited we get so I think those if you are happy with what you do you can do amazing things in the field you're in so I think that's how I've been able to do this and be happy with it. Mm -hmm.